The Palisade completely reimagines what a meta 2x1 can be. It starts as a completely standard honeycomb 2x1, but expands into a full main base. It's got a spacious and cozy open core with tons of storage, an incredible mini mountain roof, and shooting floor combo that leaves zero angles unchecked, and more respawns per player than you can shake a stick at. Eight beds per person to be exact if you're playing in a trio. We've also got a compact compound with a furnace wall and double chain link turrets. You might be thinking that all of those features sound expensive, but you may be surprised to find out that the upkeep of this base is only 9,000 stone and 11,000 metal fully upgraded with all deployables. This base shrinks all of the current metas down to a reasonable cost for trios without any compromises. So if you like what you see, make sure to drop a sub and a like and keep watching to build it yourself. Here's what our footprint looks like, and even though it looks super goofy, just trust me, some of this goofiness is actually what makes the base so good. We'll start our base tour with the usual mini Satori, Mr. Man Disconnectable TC. We also have an extra place for a battery out here, and as you can see, our upkeep is super reasonable. We can disconnect the external TCs by placing this roof tile here, and then reconnect them by replacing the floor frame. If your main TC gets raided, this is how you'll be able to replace it. Next, we'll check out one of our two gatehouses, which has great visibility to check for door campers on the outside, a couple of respawns to get you back in the fight, and some peeks into compound. Coming into our airlock, we have double chain link protected turrets, which means that they can't be bowed or shot. We can make our way into the compound, which also has double chain link here, to protect from additional HV rockets. By raising a furnace up in this section, raiders won't be able to get through the compound even after they've blown the external walls. A furnace is actually five normal rockets to splash through. Continuing on, we have a little smelting station under these half-height peaks, and an additional bedroom in the compound that has a battery protected behind this garage door. Having batteries here ensures that you can power your compound turrets early game. As you can see, the half high peaks give you great visibility throughout your compact compound. Making our way back into either of our wide gapped airlocks, we can see we have mobility on the left and then additional bedrooms on the right. These are those half high peaks that we saw in the compound. Coming in the mobility chute, we also have additional bedrooms here on the left and right. Having all of these respawns ensures that your team will get back to the fight as soon as possible, whether you're defending a raid, roaming, or raiding somebody else. We'll see our tier 3 workbench on our way into our super spacious open core with furnaces, tons of boxes, great turret coverage, and our drop down directly into our starter. As mentioned, our starter is a totally standard honeycomb 2x1. We can keep our main loot and battery in here because it's the most protected throughout the entire base. Making our way back out of open core, we can go into any of our four breach peak sections that also act as mobility. As you can see, they have peaks into open core. They have long angles outside of the compound and great angles down into the compound. Because these double as mobility, we can head up and immediately see that we have dropbox storage above them, as well as this roof peak here that has additional drop boxes. Next, we'll make our way out into our wide gap sections. The wood ceilings below us are breakaway sections if somebody tries to door path through your gatehouse. We have great angles throughout the compound and a little bit of cover provided by this double door. Coming up this roof ramp, we have access to additional peaks and also a bed to go with the locker we showed below. We can make our way out onto the roof, which has an incredibly cozy vibe and unique layout. This is sort of a mini mountain roof. It has has breach peaks all over, crouch peaks everywhere, amazing turret coverage, and these cheeky little drop down sections that act as somewhat of a shooting floor. They have peaks that perfectly cover where the furnace funnels are, meaning that once those sections are breached, you'll have a perfect peak onto that breaching compound. Not to mention this bedroom section that has great angles back in and out of the compound. All of this makes up the palisade, so now let's build it. Building our starter unit couldn't be any easier. Like I've mentioned, we're just going to build a totally standard 2x1 with an airlock. Feel free to use wooden single doors until you get the metal frags to craft metal doors. We'll then place our TC in the back right corner and make our way outside to create a twig buildup for a shelf. Coming back inside, I'm going to place four large boxes in the main loot room. This will leave enough room to have three furnaces in here, as well as three sleeping bags, our workbench, and some small boxes. I'm placing a double door frame and a garage door here for now, but just place this whenever you get it. Three furnaces go along this wall with a campfire at the end. 
And then next to our door, we can place our tier one and tier two workbenches as we acquire them. Then of course, we'll place sleeping bags for all three of our teammates. Just as easily as we built our starter unit, we'll go ahead and honeycomb it by placing triangles on each side of the base. The only part that's slightly different is by our front airlock. Because this base has an open core, we want some type of mobility that leads out to the ground level instead of temporary buildups. From here, we'll place a single door frame with a wall to the right of it. We can place a sheet metal door in here for now that faces outward and use a small furnace as a jump up to the next floor. This will eventually lead to our open core, but for now it's just our roof access. Build a standard chute on the top of it and put a door on. By this point, if you're committed to your build location, it's time to put some external TCs down to prevent yourself from getting griefed. To build our two external TCs, we'll come to either side of the base and start with a triangle and three squares off of it. Delete the build up and then place three triangles back. Only leave the last triangle there and then we can build a square with three triangles off of it. We'll then place a square on these two last sockets and we can get rid of this triangle. We'll upgrade the three squares and the last triangle to metal since these hold our wide gaps up. Once you've got this done on both sides, congratulations, the hardest part of the entire build is done. To get our external TC down, we'll place a triangle with three squares after it. When we get to the end, we'll place our final three triangles. We can delete our build up here and then make sure to upgrade the TC foundation and the entire compartment. We'll use two half walls on the side facing base and then wall in the rest. We'll finish this off with two window frames and a single door frame. This will give us seven rockets of raid protection to our TC. To begin building our gatehouse, we'll place a window on the left and a single door frame on the right. Make sure to upgrade that window frame. Place walls on either side like this, and then we can fill in the window and door. We'll connect our gatehouse to our TC using a triangle frame and three square frames. Once it's done, it should look just like this. To finish building our gatehouse, we'll put these half-height floor tiles here and then put ceilings on top. These create head glitches that are difficult for enemies to shoot you through. Make sure to upgrade this double door frame to sheet metal because this holds up our wide gaps. Then we can place doors, window embrasures, and a couple of beds in here for quick respawns. Just like that, your gatehouse is complete. Once you've done this on both sides, you've got both of your externals up and some additional respawns outside of your base. I've gone ahead and upgraded our starter 2x1 to HQM and the honeycomb to metal. To get additional compound bedrooms down, we'll start by placing triangles and squares off of these sockets. We'll then place down a window, a wall, and a ceiling. Place your bed and either a large box or a locker, and then seal the window with an embrasure. We'll do the same on the right side, except we'll add this triangle here. After all of those deployables are down, we'll place four double door frames on each of these sockets. Make sure to leave this triangle open as that's our mobility up. We can then place each of the following doors. You can either use a ladder, a ladder hatch, or a furnace as a jump up here. To build our second set of compound bedrooms, we'll start by creating this build up off of our existing ones. Make sure to upgrade this foundation on each side to metal. We'll then create the same half height peaks on these. After we've done that, we'll place triangles off of each section to reunite them in the middle. We'll add a triangle on the end and we can upgrade these three foundations to metal. Make sure to do the same on the other side as well. We'll then wall in the rest of this bedroom. Make sure this last triangle is in sheet metal because this will house our battery. We'll create more of these half height peaks here as well. We can place a double door to seal our bedroom here and just use a sheet door or a garage door if you have the spare gears. Place a garage door over your battery compartment and then place a locker in front of it. 
We can fit two beds in front of that, and then a couple of small boxes on either side. The small boxes add a little bit of storage for seal mats, compound walls, or anything else you might need. They also allow you to side strafe across the beds and then across the boxes. You could also place large boxes in here as well. We're so close to wrapping up our compound, we just need some high walls, large furnaces, turrets, and a few small details. First, head over to each of your two gatehouses and add this additional wall here off your wide gap foundation. We'll then come to the compound bed pods and place two high walls off of it just like this. Make sure you do it on the other sides as well. If you head over to these foundations and just slightly go up one of them and raise the furnace all the way up, it should fit right in between these two walls here and not allow people to pass through. We'll then head to each of our gatehouses and bed pods and place some barricades on them. On our gatehouses, we'll place a turret here with three frames next to them. Two of them can be wood, and the one that holds up the wide gaps should be sheet metal. We'll place a mixture of chain link and chain link doors on these foundations as well. Make sure to do that on every side. Come over to the compound bed pods, and we can just simply place two turrets here. And that's it, your compound is completely done. To start building your open core, make your way up your roof access. Wall in the entire honeycomb 2x1 perimeter besides the triangles on the end. On top of those, we'll place a full wall in the middle with half walls on either side and windows above those. We'll do the same on the other side. Place double door frames right here. Place square ceiling tiles off of each double door frame with triangles off of that. Placing doors on at any time will seal our open core. We can start building out our loot rooms by coming to our jump up, placing half height triangles. If you haven't upgraded your jump up already, all you have to do is upgrade it to sheet metal to be able to rotate it. Then place more triangles right above you. A half wall goes here with the last two triangles to form our loot room. We can put a stone double door frame over this and put a garage door on it. We'll do the same on the other side by first creating the loot room and then creating a pseudo jump up on the other side. Place the triangles on top and then the half wall here and finish off building our shelves. We can put low walls at the bottom of these loot rooms for less secure storage. On the chute that doesn't go anywhere, we can put another garage door, and then you can put some furnaces in it. The build cost and upkeep budgets for armored doors on these sockets as well. I might have lied earlier when I said that building the externals was the hardest part of the base. Placing four boxes in this square is going to be the most difficult by far. What I do is I clip the box into the back wall and then pull it out slowly so I can see if it's at an angle or not. It'll help you get the box alignment perfect, but if you just don't want to deal with the struggle, you could always put three boxes here instead, and it's no problem to fit those. But I mean, come on, how satisfying is this. Once we have all of our boxes down, we can break this low wall and replace it with a half wall. You can either upgrade this to wood or stone, it doesn't really matter, it's just here for mobility. Placing a triangle under each of the doors will make mobility in the open core amazing, but still allow you to access all of those boxes in the floor super easily. And then all we have to do is fill out our loot rooms like we normally would. All of these boxes are actually placeable even though that low wall is there. Also, these shelves don't have to be metal, they can be stone. We'll get our last few boxes up on the top here, and then place our auto turrets in each of their pods. And just like that, you've successfully built the open core for the palisade. I don't recommend moving in though until you've finished up the mobility, because it's not very secure right now. Now that we've built our open core, we need a way to get to it. We'll start off by building bedrooms on each of these squares. We can also seal in the three triangle section here where the mobility goes. We'll place ceiling tiles on each of these triangles except the last one. This one will get a stone jump up in front of it. In each of the bedrooms, place a bed, a locker, and two small boxes. 
You can use garage doors on all of these sockets, but for cost saving measures, I just use double doors. It doesn't really affect the rate cost and they're just a lot faster to open and close. Coming up to our third floor, we'll see this half wall where we can place additional half walls with windows on top of them. We'll seal in the top as well as the mobility section and then repeat the same thing on the other side. We'll put a ceiling on our mobility section and then place double door frames at the top with sheet double doors on them. We can put horizontal embrasures facing inward on every one of the window sockets. Before we place down all of our roof ramps, let's get our lockers down. These increase your mobility, but they also add a lot of storage to each one of these sections and allow you to quickly re-kit during a fight. Keeping this ramp stone increases mobility on it, but it also does make it a lot more vulnerable to splash damage, so the choice is up to you. Just like that, we've completed our mobility. We'll start building our shooting floor and roof by coming to this section and upgrading the back of each of our loot rooms in our open core. Again, this was budgeted in the upkeep and build costs shown at the beginning of the video. After we've upgraded all of those, we can come back to these sections here and put down a double door frame, a half wall, and then a double door frame. After we've got those down, we can put full on honeycomb on this entire section and then we'll actually replace that single door inside with a vending machine, build up more stone frames on this square section, three high. Then we'll come over to our wide gap section and in sheet metal we'll build up our wide gap frames. After we've done that, we can make our way up the mobility to our fourth floor. Place these floor tiles off the wide gap with one coming off of the main base. We'll then fully enclose this with full walls and create a door path into our mobility. Put a ceiling on this section and then a window frame here which will be used later as a roof peak. Put an angled roof here as mobility and then a door frame here for a garage door. A frame and two ceiling tiles go above us, and then we can fit another locker right here. We can put windows on the top as well as triangle roof tiles. Put another roof peak here as well as a door frame, then we can slap another bed here. Put some vertical embrasures on all of these and seal it in with a roof. And we'll come over to our sunken shooting floor sections and make sure to upgrade these to metal. Place half walls with windows on top of them for each of these peaks to the side. And then we'll enclose this section in windows. We can put half walls on top as well, which will create a turret pod and a windmill tower. Add a double door frame here to give the roof stability. And we'll finish sealing this section with some half walls. We can seal the turret pod on top as well. Then in our bedroom, we can place a bed, a box, a locker, two beds, whatever you want. And we'll seal off the windows with embrasures and windows. Now it's time to add our roof honeycomb so we can start by placing half walls right here with the ceiling on top of it. We can place a double door or a garage door going down into that bedroom and then finish creating all of our roof breach peaks. You should probably place all of your window embrasures before you put the roof tiles down. It just makes it a little bit easier. and we can fill out our turret pod and put a windmill on top of it. Keep in mind, you can always add more windmills to this base if you're looking for additional power. To finish off our roof peaks, we can place a ramp inside and upgrade it to wood. If you're struggling with this, try opening your console and typing client.lookatradius 0.01. It should let you upgrade the ramp a lot easier. You can place the boxes and the embrasure on all with the window frame there. If you want even more cover in this ankle biter, you can put a bed right in front of it. It's not a very durable solution, but it does give you free respawns and a lot more cover when you're using the peak. 
Add your last two turrets up on the roof here, and I think we are just about done. Congratulations, you've built the Palisade. I told myself I wouldn't upload a 2x1 or a 2x2 base on this channel until I did something that I had not seen before, and the Palisade is definitely my favorite base that I have ever made. So I hope you have a lot of fun wipes out of this base, and I would really appreciate if you would like and subscribe to the channel. If you watched to this point, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.